protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com Switching gears now from news out of the mental institutions once known as institutions of higher learning. Now we have a group of law school professors saying that all lives matter is white supremacy. So these were almost 60 professors at American University's Washington College of Law. They've signed an open letter to the law school community charging that the words all lives matter constitute white supremacy. The professors composed this letter after an unidentified person at the law school placed a handwritten sign reading all lives matter on a faculty member's door. Now, it was placed near a flyer for a training program on police violence and near flyers for other social justice and racial equality events. Such placement is assuredly an act of speech suppression, they proclaimed. So they say in context, the message appears intended by the messenger to be an attempt to silence and intimidate an opposing viewpoint, not an effort to communicate a different perspective. So now <laughs> law professors are making the argument that you cannot place a sign next to other signs. Maybe those signs made this person uncomfortable. Maybe they felt like they were being bombarded with the perspective they weren't entirely comfortable with. And so they just put up a sign next to this sign. But you can't do that now because you are silencing someone else's viewpoint. Your viewpoint doesn't matter if people you know, are frightened by it. Um, it's a completely, just completely insane. But that's not all. We also have dozens of college students being in fear after someone wrote Trump 2016 in chalk across campus. So these were about 40 to 50 students uh, at Emory University in Atlanta. They requested a meeting with the school's president um, after they saw these words scrawled across campus. Uh, it was written in chalk on buildings and sidewalks, the students said that they were threatened by the intimidating messages and they voiced genuine concern and pain. They had a little stop hate protest. And speaking with the wheel, one of the freshmen there said, my reaction to the chalking was one of fear. I told myself that it was a prank and that the responsible individual was probably laughing in their room. I told myself that Emory would do something about it. <laughs> Another student said they were alarmed and the guy said, I thought, OK, it's just a guy who wants to write whatever he wants to believe in for his political campaign. I was like, OK, I'm fine with that to a certain extent. <laughs> so they're calling this the chalking. And another person said it was like cross burning. Yes. I mean, they have trivialized someone writing in chalk. Uh, trivi trivialized cross burning and equating it to someone writing in chalk. This is this is the wimpiness of what we're dealing with on college campuses. And, and that's not it. But the Emory University president has vowed to hunt down this student whose Trump 2016 message wrecked the safe space. He also announced that he would review security footage in hopes of identifying the perpetrators and subjecting them to the conduct violation process. And a libertarian writer Jeffrey Tucker said he was the one that said it was like cross burning. So this is coming from a libertarian point of view, which I find very surprising. He says it was like cross burning. It was on private property. It was extremely damaging. And the students and faculty were totally embarrassed. It was absolutely intended to intimidate everyone. And it worked. Now we have another very special op-ed coming out of Columbia University. And this is a student claiming that Belgians are to blame for the Brussels attack. This is a student at Columbia University. Um, he, he blames Tuesday's Islamic terrorist attack in Brussels on Belgians because their society is a front of Islamophobia. Columbia's vigils and memorial services allow us to mourn victims and condemn terrorism. Moving forward, however, they should condemn not only terrorism, but also the specific Islamophobic attitudes and policies that facilitated the recent attacks. He, he is, uh, this person is a freshman planning to study French as well as women, gender, and sexuality studies. And no doubt they're going to be saying that they demand free college once they can't get a job once they graduate. But goes on to argue that the Brussels attack and other terrorist attacks are usually not arbitrary events without any justification. They often are responses to institutionalized hate and oppression. So now this person is saying 
if you go <laughs> watch out whoever ch chalked that university with Trump 2016, because now you have just justified terrorism because people there were saying that the hate and the oppression, well, you know, if they've been triggered, well, now in the future, it's okay. Terror attacks are totally fine if killing innocent people is completely justified. I wonder what he has to say about this video that came out of a Muslim woman ripping up an Israeli flag at a memorial for the attacks there in Brussels. It was a makeshift memorial. Uh, we can go ahead and roll that B-roll there now. So you'll see that this woman has so much hate in her heart that she can't even allow the few moments to pay respects to the dead long enough to just have to rip up this flag and place it under other things. But that's completely fine. I mean, that's her opinion matters. Your opinion does not matter. And if you don't disagree, you're racist. You're totally racist. And that's not it. <laughs> That's not the end of the insensitivity when it comes to this. A no borders activist reacted to the horrific attacks in Brussels by welcoming them as a good opportunity for migrants to exploit the chaos. Now, this was just hours after these attacks took place. Kiera Lavernak, she describes herself as a freelance troublemaker. She wrote, Eurostar to Brussels suspended. Lille Airport is taking some of the planes due to land in Brussels. It could mean some chaos and good chance some people will go to the UK. Sorry, there is a good side to everything. So she posted these comments to the Calais Migrant Solidarity Facebook page. And of course, other people were countering her argument saying, yeah. You're saying it's a good side to people being killed this morning? And she said, whether it's a good side, it's totally irrelevant to me, before she urged migrants to exploit the buildup of traffic at Calais Eurostar, remarking, tell your friends in the jungle. So there you go. I mean, people don't even have any sympathy for the dead. They have sympathy for the people who are putting on these terrorist attacks. Don't hurt the poor terrorist feelings. And of course, Germany, now you'll remember they had the hugging thing there at the migrant camps after uh, there was the mass molestation on New Year's Eve. Well, now they've also given 150,000 free condoms to refugees to tackle the negative perceptions about migrant sex attacks. This was uh, back in October, organizations had encouraged German condom manufacturers to donate free condoms and distribute them to migrant camps in order to give people what they need most. And of course, this was an attempt to tackle the negative perceptions that were held by German citizens um, following the mass molestation of women in Cologne on New Year's Eve and incidents like last month's brutal rape of a 10 year old boy by an Iraqi migrant at a swimming pool in Vienna. And uh, Paul Joseph Watson goes on to point out that this is Germany making sexual education a centerpiece of its migrant welcoming policy. Breitbart's Oliver Stone documented that the German government is also funding a website for newly arrived refugees that gives life lessons in sex, including different positions, prostitution, and how to engage in casual sex. So liberal and so loving. Now, while all of this is going on, let's just check in with the president. What does he have to say about this? This is my number one priority. I've got a lot of things on my plate, but my top priority is to defeat ISIL and to eliminate the scourge of this barbaric terrorism that's been taking place around the world. And we see high profile attacks in Europe, but they're also killing Muslims throughout the Middle East, people who are innocent. Uh, people who are guilty only of worshiping Islam in a different way than this organization. Well, sorry about that, President Obama. Hate to have to cut your trip short, but the FBI Director James Comey has acknowledged that this attack will inspire some copycats and the Brussels bombers did plan to attack a nuclear power station. Now, they are getting in some more reports after being able to get into these guys' apartments. They found 12 hours of reconnaissance footage um, showing that they were about to attack a nuclear power plant. And in fact, these attacks were planned for this coming Monday, but they had to switch their uh, targets to the Brussels airport following the arrest of their accomplices this week.
Well, stick around because we've got more coming up. Please take a moment to listen to what I'm about to break down very, very carefully because the information I'm about to lay out in just two minutes changed my life and changed the life of many, many people around me. I was a big sports enthusiast, but loved to eat like a pig when I was 10 years old up to about 22 or so. And I ran six miles every other day and lifted weights almost every day and had a great physique. Then I got into radio and television 21 years ago and got so busy in my work, I stopped working out. And everything was okay for four or five years, but then suddenly I started putting on pounds every month. And in the next 10 years, I gained almost 100 pounds. Then about seven years ago, I began jogging, swimming long distances, and lifting weights again, trying to lose weight, and was only able to lose about 20 of the 98 pounds. I even changed my diet. I even increased the exercise, it didn't work. But as soon as I began to get the nutrients and compounds that I needed, my whole life changed. I've gone from 200 and almost 80 pounds down to about 220 pounds or so. It is incredible. And in just the last three years, Super Male Vitality, developed by Dr. Group for InfoWarsLife.com exclusively, and products like the Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine have just done incredible things for my body. I work out less, even though I'm older, I've lost more weight, my muscles got stronger, my stamina, my libido, and so much more. The truth is we went out to bring you the very best we could, true game-changing products. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today and secure your super male or female vitality and X2 True Nascent Iodine today and hopefully start your journey towards living a more natural, focused, clean life. There's a lot of other excellent nutraceuticals we've developed and also third-party ones that we sell at InfoWarsLife.com that are excellent. But the two game changers that I believe if you order them are most likely to really give you the biggest bang for your buck are Super Male Vitality and Female Vitality and of course X2 Nascent Iodine. Take the challenge, visit InfoWarsLife.com today and secure your nutraceuticals. At the same time, know that you're funding the fight for freedom worldwide. Thank you for your support.